Hello. Hello, Nyan. How are you? How do you feel? Good. Amazing. It, may, it makes me feel very happy. Nyan, can you tell me what did we talk about in our last lesson? We talked about invitation. We talked about invitations, all right? And what do we use an invitation for? What, the, what is the intention of creating or making or sending an invitation? Uh, what can you repeat? The what is the intention of somebody else sending an invitation? Um, to invite people to a event a meeting. Okay, to invite people uh, for an event or meeting. Uh, I think one of the homeworks I gave you was to design an invitation. Yeah. Didn't I? Yes. Okay, so can I listen to your invitation? Um, I sent it in Java already. You can a second. Okay, no problem. Take your time. So now I would like to see how good you did your invitation. All right, to check your homework. Um, first is, dear Mr. Kang, I'm young. As you know, that three more days will be my birthday. So I'm glad to see you in Bangkok more on Monday. Thank you. Okay, but I think there is more something missing here. What is missing in your invitation? Can you tell me? Oh, uh, the place. No, not the place. What is missing? I uh, tell well, the. Uh, did you say the time? Yes. Oh, okay. On oh, Monday. I forgot to say the time. <laughs> yeah, because um, otherwise. It can be at 7 p.m. Okay, at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. That's right. Let me tell you something. There are invitations for different types of social events. All right. And among these events, they can be either uh, formal or informal events. All right. And uh, remember that also an invitation can be like a little card, but it can also be a letter. Okay, can be written in a letter, inviting somebody maybe from a company to another to join to certain events. So just keep this in mind because um, the reason why I'm saying this is because the many times people, uh, you talk about, or for example, the many times people listen about an invitation, the first thing they understand or they think is on a piece of paper like this. Can you see this? All right, this is kind of like a book, like, right? Can you see this? No, it's so small. Yeah, look at this. Can you see it well? Okay. See okay, it. the thing is that many people think about something about something like that. And in fact, an invitation, not necessarily, all right, not necessarily needs to be limited to a piece of paper like this or to a small size like that, all right? An invitation can also be a letter. As you saw before in our test, we talk about formal letter, but there will be like some, you know, some manner, some ways, all right? To, to use, to, to design the invitation with all formalities, as you could see in a, as you can see in the, in the letter we, we designed before, do you remember the formal letter? Mm, yes, I remember. Formal yeah, letter. let me give you, yeah, when you, when you create a formal invitation, all right, this is what we call in English formal invitation because it's a formal letter as well. But what is the way how people design this kind of invitations? They do it this way, all right? They, special, yeah. they especially do the following. For example, you are going to have an invitation for so for a certain activity. So what you're gonna do in this particular case, Nyan, or where people are going to do, they will start as the same information as in, in any other letter. For example, uh, like the heading, the address, the date, and all that. All right, then goes to the introduction. Dear Mr. Nyan, for example, I'm gonna say like that. Dear Mr. Nyan, I'm getting, uh, I'm writing to you this letter to invite yeah. you to our activity. 
So our activity is an event that is gonna be designed or is going to be made to gather funds, all right, for a social cause for children. That's for example, all right? You understand my point? Okay. For example, we are going to gather funds for a social event destined to collect the money to build a shelter for children, for example. All right? This event will take place, which is similar to what you just told me. This event is going to take place at Winter Garden Hotel, Ho Chi Minh City, 70305. For example, I'm just making up. Okay, and then after that, so you dismiss the letter as, he, as you are closing up in a formal letter. Yours faithfully. I hope I'm looking forward or we are looking forward to hearing from you. Yours, um, yours uh, faithfully or sincerely, depending on the letter you, try, you are trying to write. Mr. Thomas, for example. All right. Okay. And then uh, you take all this into account. An invitation not necessarily is gonna be like the, the type of letter that the type of piece of paper that you always see, maybe like the invitation to a birthday party for children, not necessarily. All right. It's kind of like there are many formats pre-established. Even so, somebody writes a formal letter there are some formats pre-established that people use in order for the standards. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I mean, standards that people use to design letters, invitation, jobs, application, and many types of documents. Just keep in mind, maybe if you go on Google, you browse on internet, you browse the internet, so you can see that there will be even multiple types of formals when creating a letter. Just keep this in mind. So now we are going to start our new class. Let me share my screen to you. Give me a second. How many types of invitations did you know before, Nyan? How many types? Yeah, that's right. Types. I, yeah, types of invitations. Did you know only right. one type? Yeah, invitation. How can I have more? Yes. Like yeah. it just you know, last like uh, invite this people. Yeah, yeah but those need. are, uh, this is well known as what we call informal invitation. All right, that is the one you can use for a birthday party. That is the one you can use for any type of celebration, things like that, you know? Okay, that it doesn't require so much formality, but the ones that is a uh, formal, that is pretty much like, a, like, you know, any other letter, you will always consider this kind of invitation uh, as if you are sending a formal letter. So normally I can tell you that this one is more especially written, all right? It's written, for example, the team of a company wants to invite the team of a comp another company. They are not going to write something in a piece of paper like that, or they are not going to say like, hey, my friend, I want you guys to come from our company. Thank you so much. Goodbye. You know? So it lacks, it lacks formality. So let's get it started. Another thing to consider is that it has like the three elements that any other letter may have. It has three elements, introduction, it has the body, and also it has the closure as any other letter. Keep this in mind, because that's very important. Nyan, let me ask you something. Are you about to finish the course? What can you say again? Are you about to finish this? Uh, are you about to finish this English course? This course. Yeah, this class. 
Do you mean? I don't understand. What I'm saying, the English. Oh, the curse? Yeah. I, I don't know. Let me ask my mom. Yeah, I'm afraid that I think you were about to finish. Uh, but anyway, so we talk about later. We'll talk about that later. Let me just share my screen to you so you can see that today's class. Hello. Yes. Can you see my screen? No. Not yet? No. Okay, no problem. Okay, so look at this, Nyan. Are today's classes writing messages? This is what we are going to learn today in our class. Can you see my screen? Yes. Amazing. Writing messages. What kind of messages do you think people write? Um, like just chat to talk into it to, together. Okay. Can I tell you that there are many uh, more messages? Okay, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. So look at this. I'm gonna show you these messages. Let me tell you that there are different type of messages. For example, you have the MMS that are sending messages in a phone. You have the emails. They are also type of messages. And, and between the emails, you have formal and informal emails. You have um, written messages that you do by letter, et cetera, et cetera. So look at this. I want you to read these messages. And let me see what you, what do you understand about that? Fred. Can you see my can you see my yeah okay can you are you able to read it Nyan? so we're going yeah. to compare the messages all right number one is mike yeah number that's one. right so would you mind reading the first one 
Emily, I've gone out for a day. That is still in bed. There's cereal in a cupboard of bread if you want toast. If you want a coffee, plug in a coffee machine by the kettle. If we run out of milk, you can ask dad to go and buy some. See you later, mom X. Okay, okay. Which, which one were you reading? Fred? Emily. Emily, okay. Next one, Fred. Fred uh, hope you had a good day at school. I'm working like this evening. So I won't get back until just after six. There's cottage by in the fridge. You can heat it up in a micro microwave. Can you please load the dishwasher then when you finish the that? Okay, and then? Um, Eleni. Uh, I've gone Ellen. home to my parents for the weekend. I just can't st stand the mess in the flat. Can you please wash up the plates and mugs you use and clean up the mess in the living room? It's your turn. The vacuum cleaner is in my room next to the wardrobe. Back Sunday evening, Susie. Susie. Mike. Mike. I couldn't make breakfast with this morning because the cooker isn't working. Can you call the electrician? Electrician. I've gone to the group. I, I've gone to the gym. My class finished at five. Don't forget to drop Jenny off at her pilot class. I'll pick her up on the way home. Back about six, Tanya X. Okay, so can you pronounce this word again? Electrician? What? Can you please pronounce this word? Electrician? Electrician? That's right, well done. So number one, now let's go to our questions. All right, let's go ahead with our set of questions. Didn't have breakfast. Who was that? Uh, uh, have, didn't have breakfast is Mike. Uh, no, Tanya. X. Okay, Tanya didn't have breakfast. Has okay. gone out for the day. Uh, mom. Okay. Uh, Has uh, made a mess. Where your results of? Uh, had a mess is uh Tanya X. Oh no 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 no. Then, all right. Lenny. Has made a mess. All right. Has to load the de Has to load the dishwasher. Um. Dishwasher, dishwasher. Um, what it? Uh, uh, dad, uh, Fred's dad. Fred has to load the dishwasher. So the di okay, the ditches. So, so the name. The dishwasher. Is, uh, person who sent or the person who received say it again one more time i did not manage to listen to your voice well so the up name one so the up name one you can like in the first row they have the name right is that's the name of person who sent a person who received okay uh, and the top that's the person that is going to receive for example, Fred, hope you have a good day at school. Nyan, I hope you are okay at the class. I'm writing to you this message to let you know that it's gonna be okay. The person that, that is on top is the name of a person that is going to read the message. And the other one at the end is the one that is sending, all right? One is the, the first is the recipient, the second and the last one, this is the, the sender clear with this yes okay then like i said number four fred has to load the dishwasher 
So number five, number five is fed up with her flat mate. Flat mate. Flat mate. Flat. Any idea? Give me a second. I okay, you can analyze. No problem. Just take your time to make sure that that what you are writing is correct. Um, flat mat. Can you please wash up the files for me? Flat mat. Cookers on the meat. Or it can get me the recent Flat mat. Flat mat. What is flatmate? Flatmate is like somebody who lives with you in a in apartment. Oh, okay. Somebody that is living in a uh, you know in a room with you, or somebody that it maybe is your classmate, or somebody that you know that is living with you with the intention right. to pay. Uh, for example, you rent an apartment, but maybe you don't have all the money to pay for the whole apartment. All right. What's happening mm -hmm. is that the flatmate is a person who pays the apartment with you so that you don't have to pay all that money that maybe you don't have, or maybe you have, but you're gonna be born in. And then this person maybe paid parts of it. And this way you, the, this way the person has less problem to pay the apartment. And then he's, he becomes a flatmate. Um, Mike, Mike, uh, no, 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 yes, my, um, Mike, Mike. That'll be Susie. What Susie? Susie what? is set up with her flatmate. What, where, oh, the L, L and me. I just think that, uh, they are Mike, Jenny, and Tanya. In fact, uh, no, actually, Susie. All right. So number okay. six is going to bring her daughter home. Tanya. Any idea? Yes. Tanya is going to bring her daughter home. Well done. Pretty good job. Okay. Might have to buy some milk. Who's that? Um. Emily's dad. Emily's dad might have to, okay, to buy some milk. Number eight, we'll arrive home just after six. Six. Tanya. Tanya. Tanya, Tanya, that's right. Okay, so let me see. Okay, next one, number two. Check the meaning of the household appliances below. All right, look at this. I want you to check the meaning of the household appliances below. And then after that, I want, I want you to tell me, Yan, I would like you to tell me which ones have you got at home? And of course, I want to know if you use them. Look at this. Here we have some household appliances. All right. What is the first one? Coffee machine. Coffee machine. The next one? Cooker. The other one? Dishwasher. Dishwasher. All right. The next one? Freezer. Okay. Freezer. And the other one? Rich. And the other one? Iron. Iron. And the other one? Kettle. And the other one? Microwave. And what is the other one? Toaster, vacuum and, cleaner. And what is next? Yeah, that's all. Toaster? Toaster vacuum cleaner. And, and washing machine. And washing machine. And let me ask you something. Here is the question. Which of these do you have at home? Or which of them do you guys 
use at home. Maybe you, your father, ma your, maybe you, your mom and dad. Okay. Which of um, those? We don't have cookie. Uh, we have, um, what is cooker? I didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, we have cooker, dishwasher, freezer, fridge. Iron is the normal things. Why is iron need to? Like everyone will have the iron. What do you? Oh, the iron. Okay. Uh, we have iron. We have microwave. Uh, we have um, kettle. Okay. Uh, we have vacuum cleaner. Uh, we have washing machine. And let's see, what is toaster? Toaster. Uh, okay. We don't have toaster. Okay. Okay, you don't have toaster? Okay, amazing. So, but you have a vacuum cleaner, right? As you told me. Yeah. Amazing. So look at that. I want you to find seven appliances in the messages. Let's look at the messages. All right. And there in these messages, you will need to find, I want you to find seven appliances that were listed in the vocabulary list so that you tell me. Let's see. The, the application, applications is like a task or the things that they tell for people to know about that. Uh, uh, you mean like appliances? Yeah, what does that mean? Appliances are all kind of things you use, all, all kind of electronic things you use at home for household chores. For example, if you're toast. going to cook, the toast, the cooker, the, let me see, the stuff, the fridge, the refrigerator, all of those are appliances. Under, understand? Understand, understand. Okay, just let me know. Um, the toast. Okay. The, the kettle. Uh, fridge, microwave. <laughs> the fridge, microwave, dishwasher. dishwasher, or automated dishwasher in fat. Oh. Something else? Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Cooker. Cooker, that's right. That's yeah, so. all. Okay, amazing. Mm -hmm. I think you did it very well. So look at this. Now we have this exercise. This is exercise number four. Okay, look at that. So this is what we are going to do here. The sentences below all contain phrasal verbs. As if you don't know what phrasal, ver are, phrasal verbs are, those are compound verbs, all right? Made by a one verb a plus uh, a preposition. So you use a verb. After this verb, you're gonna use a preposition. And because of this, all right, it's a compound verb, all right? Accompanied by a preposition. And because of that, it's considered a phrasal verb. Understand that? Okay. Then um, you're going to find in the messages and complete the, and complete them. So read the messages if you want again, or you can compare if you have these sentences. So then you will complete that. Exa complete that. For example, plug in the coffee machine by the kettle. The kettle. Plug in the coffee machine with a kettle. If we run out of milk, 
If you run out of milk, can you ask that to go and buy yes. some? Number three. I, I want get back. Back until just after six. Number four, okay. you can hit it. In a microwave, hit it up. You can hit it up in the microwave. Okay. Can you nope. please wash the plates and, and clear? And clear and off clear the mess in the living. Don't, don't forget to chop Jenny off at her pilot class. Okay, don't forget her. to drop Jenny off at the ballet uh, class. I will pick her up on her way home. Okay, I will pick her up on the way home. Okay, amazing. Let's go to the exercise number five. Okay, here we have the use of can, something very simple, something truly simple. So they learn this box. We are going to find the example, all right, the examples of can or, or okay, the can for requests in the notes. So look at this. We can use can for requests. Can you read the example? Can you buy some milk, please? And then we have another case. We also can use can for permission. Example? Can, can I go out this evening? However, if I start completing this exercise, how will I do the first sentence? If we use it politely. Can, can I borrow your laptop? Can I borrow your laptop? Number two. Uh, number two. Yes. Can you upload the dishwasher for me? On okay. Your... Okay, amazing. And can next have, one. Can, ne I a, can I have a, another piece of cake, please? Can I have another piece of cake, please? Number four. Can I give, can I give Mary a lift to the station? Can I give, can I give Mary a lift to the station? So in English, in American English, we say a ride. Okay. Let me, in British English, they say lift. We say here, a ride. So mm -hmm. number five, use your mobile. Okay. Use your mobile, please. Can I use your mobile, please? Can I use your my mobile, please? So then you're asking for permission. Number six, look at that. Imagine that you live in a flat and, and are going away for the weekend and that you are going on your way to your weekend, to the weekend. I want you to write a message to your flatmate. And also, I want you to include the following information. For example, to tell him or to tell her, to tell her where you're going. Remind him or remind her, remind her to do something that involves a household appliance. Next one, to ask him or to ask her to buy some food or drink or to say when you will be home. Especially this one, it'll be for a homework because I know it's gonna take uh, some right. time for you to elaborate it. But can you tell me one of these messages, like maybe for a- uh, Oh, I have an ID for all already. Okay, tell me, let me listen to your voice, how good you do it. <clears throat> um, hello, Kwa. So today I have a, a trip with my classmate to Bung Bao. okay. Um, it would take about two or three days. Uh, they have some buy some cake and some meat in in the fridge already. You can heat it up by wait. What what is funny? No, it's like so, the, what you're saying. 
it's so something well, like something like very common you know like something that happens in real life that's what i like this is something that is common that happens in real life this is what it makes me feel happy you are using good ideas so like it's kind of like you're living your message all right you can continue don't smile. Don't smile at me, okay? Don't laugh at me, okay? Yeah, I, I'm doing it because I like what you are doing. Okay, you can hit it up by the microwave. Okay. Um, I have cooked enough uh, rice for three days already. You can uh, use it to eat or you can go out to uh, the restaurant. You? Okay. Is that the same message or another one? Same. Oh, I, so, I okay. Have, okay, okay. That's the next part. Price. Okay, that's the next part of the message. No problem. Maybe a comma and then the rest of the message. Um, in the fridge, nearly go out of milk and bread already. Can you go and buy it? Mm. Okay. Next one is... Um, Use the vacuum cleaner and the vacuum cleaner to clean my room and yours, okay? Um, don't uh, mess everything up. Keep everything clean and clean on a mug in your clothes by... Um, wait, what is the things that we use to wash the clothes? <laughs> Washing machine. Okay, so you would and uh, you can wash your clothes by the washing machine. And remember to feed my dog. Okay, I don't want it to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's gonna be taking care of all of your things. So Nyan, to finish a class, all right. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what did we learn today in this class? Uh, we learn how to write a message already. Okay, um, homework. You're going to do this homework I told you, and I also want you to write a formal message. Do you understand what I'm saying? Formal message, different to the ones we just mentioned, like as if this is a letter. You're going to have to show me two of them for the next class, all right? Okay. Okay, Nya. Well, thank you so much for being in the class. I hope you have a nice rest of the day or evening. And see you next class. Goodbye. Just let me uh, let, allow me to make sure that if your class is over or just talk to your mom, I need to check that. I'm gonna confirm. All right. Okay. Okay. Anyway, thank you for being in the class. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.